Part 1. Some Context. 7-4 and 7-8. These two are also known as septuple meter. I like to call them the sevens. In music, these things are called time signatures. They're like rhythmic foundations that you can use as a bass, and when you're writing a song, you build up from there. Music writer Christopher R. Weingarten described the sevens like this. For non-nerds, just count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. Or any mathematical combo like 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1. He went on to say that the sevens are like a car with three and a half wheels. Difficult to drive, full of uncomfortable bumps, a mix of the unexpected and the compelling. When a band plays in 7-4 or 7-8, it feels like a record needle stumbling over a piece of dust or ending a dance move with a rolled ankle. Now, as you can imagine, in the world of Western popular music, the world of pop, the sevens just don't have sway. They don't have any power. They don't get seen very often at all. I mean, in the article we were just looking at, the title is 17 Essential Songs in 7-4. 17. I feel like... Mr. Weingarten was trying to make a top 20 and just gave up after a while because he couldn't rustle up 20 examples of decent songs that use 7-4 because there just aren't that many. Let's have a look at the Septuple Meter Wikipedia page and see who has made songs that use the sevens. Okay, so The National have one, Dream Theater have one, Rush have one and a bit, Peter Gabriel has one, Nirvana used it in a chorus once, Alice in Chains used it in verses once, Andrew Lloyd Webber has one, and Zimmer has two, Led Zeppelin used it a bit once, uh, Soundgarden used it a bit more, that was twice, uh, The Police have one, uh, Solo Sting has two, Paul Simon, one, Red Hot Chili Peppers, one, Tool, they've got one and a bit, Jeff Tweedy made one with his kid, David Bowie used it once to uh, punch up the verses of Soul Love. And uh, yeah, the band with the most, to keep this in mind for later, the Grateful Dead have used the sevens the most, with a whopping three times. So yeah, the sevens. To me, it seems like every year or so, a confident artist or group, usually quite well established, will approach the sevens like it's a, like an old musical riddle or a rite of passage or something and they give it a shot, and, and then they say, yep, that was our 7-4 song, and that's that. Opinion time! I think that the sevens can be great, and also they can be obnoxious. Let's look at some songs. 7-4 Shoreline by Broken Social Scene. This song has 7-4 built deep into the foundations, and it's executed with an instrumental finesse in no small part due to the drummer, who I think is just so, so good. What Would I Want Sky, Animal Collective. Kind of the opposite, barely any drums. This one floats by with distant chords and strange sounds over this ghostly Grateful Dead sample. And a lead vocal that just winds through and around the 7-8 in a very uh, serpentine way that I find extremely satisfying. Paranoid Android by Radiohead. Yeah, we've got a song that uses the sevens in a small but very effective way. So the song has five distinct sections, and four of them are in 4-4, but one of them slides directly into 7-4, which um, seamlessly underlines this sort of uh, chaos that that particular section embodies. Oh, okay, and then we've got Sufjan's one. Okay, so I like Sufjan's music a lot, but this has got to be his worst song ever. Some parts are great, but some parts are so horribly irritating. I feel like this song really showcases just ba how badly 7-8 can backfire. But don't take my word for it. Let's check out the reviews. Okay, where are we? Uh, da -da 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 -da. I would actually pay to not hear Dear Mr. Supercomputer ever again. Woof. 
Okay, so we've got to talk about Money by Pink Floyd. So this song, some people think it's perfect. I think it's fine, but whatever your opinion, this is the song that put the Sevens on the map. But also the Sevens aren't actually on the map, so it's a moot point. Here's a quote from David Gilmour. We created a 4-4 progression for the guitar solo and made the poor saxophone player play in 7-4. Okay, so that's an abridged history of the sevens in Western musical recordings. Each decade, a handful of new songs get added to the portfolio, and the portfolio sits on a dusty shelf in the archive of musical curiosities. End of part one. Part two, the open door, or gears in my pants. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard are a psychedelic rock band from Australia. Their breakthrough album was 2016's Nonagon Infinity, and following that they released five full-length records over the course of 2017. During this time, they blew up internationally, garnering critical acclaim and festival mainstay status on the back of their intense live shows and constantly evolving recorded output. Also during 2016 and 2017, they released a song that made use of the sevens. But they didn't stop at one. They released two. But they didn't stop at two. They released 23. That's right. Their meteoric rise as an internationally renowned rock and roll group coincided with a full embrace of the sevens. Now, I don't think that this is interesting just because they used the sevens a lot. I think it's interesting because they used the sevens a lot and they used the sevens differently each time and they used the sevens effectively each time and they became wildly successful while they were doing it. I've personally never seen an artist or band explore the different possibilities of a time signature or any rhythmic idea so comprehensively and also with such care. Because it's not like they found one good 7-4 groove and used it over and over. They've looked at this thing from so many different angles, with different stress patterns, different ways of moving in and out, different speeds and feels, creating different musical effects each time. In my opinion, it really is kind of staggering, and also genuinely bizarre. So how are they getting away with it? How are they using this weird time signature in rowdy festival atmospheres, and inciting mosh pits? How are they low-key using the sevens smack dab in the middle of their most popular songs? Well that's a good question, and the answer is, I don't know, but here are a few things to maybe consider. German on the one. They've almost always got a strong emphasis on beat one. There's cymbal hits and chords ringing out and uh, the drums are often using beat seven to signal that we're just about to get hit with a beat one. Uh, sometimes it's a snare roll or a syncopated open hi-hat acting as a little fill. Sometimes it's a sharp snare hit acting as a full stop, sort of creating a hole suddenly that immediately gets filled by the one. In some of these examples, the kick beats and the snare beats are given equal power, equal weight, and when these beats are less differentiated than normal, that leaves us bobbing our heads the same on every beat, and that makes us as an audience more pliable. In this kind of state, if we get a kick when we're expecting a snare, our heads keep bobbing the same, no big deal, dancing momentum continues. They're a very rhythmic group, I would guess that a lot of the arranging and rehearsing starts with rhythm and ends with rhythm. In a lot of these examples, the rhythmic stresses across all instruments are all placed in a way that it's like most of the instruments are moving together rhythmically, helping each other along like one big sound machine. Okay, so I don't know if this is relevant, but I do want to mention that they almost never use click tracks or any kind of automatic timekeeping. Their tempos are generally very fluid. I've remixed a few of their songs and every time it's a hassle because every time the tempo of their track slides all over the place. Songs and sections within songs get pushed and pulled faster and slower in a way that seems like they're prioritizing momentum over anything else. When I listen to King Gizzard, I don't hear these tempo fluctuations. Uh, I just hear tracks with a lot of momentum. It's like these fluctuations are some kind of antiquated byproduct of this old fashioned 60s style of music making. 
uh, a group of musicians play together pretty constantly for quite a few years, no click track, just following the rhythm and following the momentum. So is there a chance that none of this would work if they played and recorded to a click track? I don't know. Also, one more thing. They've released a billion albums. Uh, maybe after releasing their first hundred or so songs in conventional time signatures, they were kind of pushed to take on the sevens out of maybe boredom or the need for a challenge. Maybe if all bands released a billion albums, this would happen more often. But who knows? I don't know. I'm confused. So post your own analysis in the comments and let's talk about it. End of part two. Part three. The top 20 times that King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard used 7, 4, or 7, 8 between the years of 2016 and 2017. <laughs> breaks apart with the force of the liquid blood. Vomit bomb. Chunky shrapnel tears through everything around me. And vomit plummeting. I go into spurs. Feeding through walls, I force myself upon. Yeah. 